see trees of green. Hello everyone, welcome to today's installment of Confidence Camp. We're happy to have you back. Today I want to introduce our guest. She is Maggie Fadul. Maggie is our colleague and dear friend. We've been working with her for several years and traveling the world together. She is originally from Lebanon and now living in Montreal. She is a very spiritual person, very connected to the earth and connected to herself. And so we immediately thought of her as the best person to talk about our topic today, which is you are not your things. And the reason she is so great is because Maggie has been able to release any sort of connection to material things and really find confidence within herself. And she does that many ways and she's gonna talk to us about that today. It's just an audio, not a video today. We talked with Maggie over the phone and it is a bit long, but Maggie offers some really great insights and advice. So I definitely recommend that you take 10 or 15 minutes and sit down and really listen to her. And we've put in some lovely landscape photos to make it a little bit more enjoyable. So please enjoy, and as always, please let us know what you thought of our topic. Thank you so much. When I read your note, the first thing that I thought of was that a guiding sentence in my life has always been Joseph Campbell's invitation. That's, you know, just before he died, Bill Moyers, who used to be the journalist who did a lot of interviews with him, he asked him, what would be one message you want to leave us with, with all this amazing wisdom and knowledge you have? And he said, I have one thing to, to tell you is follow your bliss. And when I heard that sentence, I, was, I had shivers all over my, my body because it summed up for me what's my real yearning and what's my real quest in this life. And to me, follow your bliss, meaning other words of saying it as I grew older is how do I, uh, how do I go through life and I really follow what makes the most meaning and sense for me and what gets me closest to the divine and whatever divine is. I'm not, I don't follow necessarily a, any uh, religion per se, but divine meaning, divine moments, magical moments, moments where I feel closer to spirit, you know, whether it's animal spirit, nature spirit, or my own spirit. So, what, you know, as I ponder a, about my experience in the last, let's say, 15 to 20 years since I've heard this word, to me, bliss and pleasure are two different things. Uh, I love pleasure. I'm a hedonist and I love to have fun in life. But pleasure, it's like pleasure is something I get out of having a wonderful dessert or a, an amazing glass of wine. And it's the good pleasure. But bliss is something deeper. It's something that where my heart opens, like with pleasure, my senses open up. But bliss, my heart opens up. And my spirit gets soars a little bit higher than, than the normal. So for me, it has become then, if that's what bliss is, and if it's not really just pleasure, then... And I, I start to say, or I started to reflect on, you know, all of the objects in my life, whether it's money or whether it's actual objects, and how the having, it's like being and having, uh, how, did, how, did, how could I find a balance between these two? meaning being bogged down, but all of the desires of wanting more and then wanting more money, wanting a better car, wanting a, another piece of jewelry, and even wanting on a spiritual level, you know, wanting to be good and wanting to be this and wanting to be that. And 
realize that the whole wanting and desiring um, is exhausting. I mean, I still go through it big time, but I, I now know that it's not always serving me well. And I have this wonderful uh, sentence of, this, of James Hillman, who was an amazing psychoanalyst, in, uh, in his book called uh, Kinds of Power. And he, he, he's talking about uh, how, you know, we always want more and more and more. Like he's talking about the materialistic society. And he said, we will never get enough of what we don't really need. And he said, that's why, you know, one set of TV is not enough. We need another one and another one, another pair of shoes. And he says, what we need, meaning like if we need to sustain our, our hunger, for instance, we have food and we get enough and that's it. But anything that we don't really need, we, we will never get enough of. And that too was a guiding sentence for me in, in the sense of saying, what is bogging me down? And I think there's nothing wrong with having 14 pairs of shoes, you know, as long as they're, <laughs> as long as they're cute shoes. <laughs> <laughs> on one hand, as long as they're cute. And on, on another hand, it's like, what is the price that I paid for buying the shoes, but not only buying the shoes, but for keep, keeping up with the image that the shoes <laughs> gives me? <laughs> Yeah, it's like, what is the price I'm paying for this desire? And if this, this object or desire is contributing to my bliss, then hooray, you know, for this object. But if this object or desire for the object is keeping bliss away from me and keeping me only in the pleasure realm with no spirit or no meaning, then I'm starting to say, well, I don't really want it then, you know. It's not contributing to this. Another word that, that, that came up for me when, you, when I read your mail is inner freedom, you know? Yeah. Because I said, basically, if we talk about the why, okay, why do we want to be more spiritual? Why do we want to be less materialistic? What's the, the why for me is what I'm, I mean, the why is, is finding that bliss. But another way of, another metaphor for the, the bliss is, it's like if, if, as if I was a bird who wants to soar higher and higher, you know, so that I can take full fledge in my flight. And that means more freedom. And then before... I used to think that freedom was really outside of me and one day I'd get it. And it's getting more and more clear to me that freedom is inside of me. It's that inner freedom. And uh, I'm giving you a lot of quotes, but these are three quotes that really, you know, fed me or were very inspiring. There is this... Uh, a wonderful Tibetan monk who said inner freedom is the breaking away from the dictatorship of me, mine, I have it, etc. And it's like as long as we're under this dictatorship of, you know, this is mine, I want to have it, then it's very hard to kind of break away from, from this whole materialistic holding me down. So what, so, so again, back to the pair of shoes, I mean, it's wonderful if I can have the 14. It's not like this is right or this is wrong. It's that is this pair of shoes or those 14 pair of shoes working on this dictatorship of this is for me and this is, you know, I need to go after this. Or are they actually enabling this inner freedom? So to me, this is what has been kind of the guiding. When I moved from a two-story home to one small apartment, I decided to really keep only what's essential. Uh, the, the question was, you know, would this object contribute to beauty in my life? And would it contribute to something that when I see it, I feel a little bit more inspired? 
and just getting rid of bags and bags and suitcases and suitcases of clothes and objects and stuff and and leaving those few objects that really meant the sense of beauty for me that was one aspect of feeling that sense of inner freedom you know of you know this whole tension between being and having you know mm -hmm. uh, so so that's um, that's one thing maggie i i i couldn't have scripted any of that or asked you questions that would have gotten me anything more <laughs> more beautiful than what you've just said so wow. what's, but one question so how, how does this relate to confidence how does this shedding of of our attachment to things build confidence and and i i think i understand the connection with the inner freedom but how would yeah. you, how would you make that connection the connection i make with confidence and, and again i only speak of of my own process is when i um when i I, I first thought, I used to think that confidence is about the little me. So I make a difference between the little me, you know, uh, and the big me. So, so it's like the small self and the bigger self, or some people call it the higher self, but a higher self seems to be so lofty, you know, like it's like the, 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 the slightly bigger self. So the smaller self is me, myself, etc. And the bigger self doesn't need to be really, really high self, you know, as in as if I was a saint or a realized being, but a higher self is just my little self that is aware that there are forces around me that are working with me and for me and for others as well, that I am not separate from from the world uh, with the big W. I'm not separate from the sky and the earth and the, and the sea and the trees and nature. Therefore, there is a certain, it's, it's like I almost do a relationship between self-confidence and a sense of faith that I do not operate as an island. Mm -hmm. I am not an island with my little self because if I only concentrate on my little self, it's very hard to carry the world, to carry my projects, to carry myself. And it's much harder to, to get to that self-confidence. But as soon as I am in touch with, oh, I'm not an island, you know, myself expands to much more than my little wall that is my body you know yeah. it expands to something so that i can be inspired by others i can speak i can lean on the sky the earth nature whatever and the sense of expansion from this little me to the bigger me instantly gives me self-confidence i don't have to do anything about it all I have to do is be it, be in that expansive mode. Simply by taking a deeper breath, it gives me that expansion. Simply by opening my arms, you know, it gives me that expansion because then I, I kind of send my brain and my spirit the sense that, okay, I'm not alone on an island here. I am connected. And to me, the self-confidence, this feeling connected brings the self-confidence rather than the opposite necessarily. You know, I used to think that one day when I achieve self-confidence, then I will have this and this and that. <laughs> and I realize now that self-confidence is not something to achieve that's outside of me. It's every breath I take is about self-confidence. So it's like, Again, it's the same thing than freedom and inner freedom. Self-confidence is a muscle that is not outside of me. Every time, you know, with a muscle, every time you work out, the muscle gets more oxygenated and therefore, you know, stronger. It's the same thing for self-confidence or spiritual confidence. Every time I take a deep breath and I... I look around and I see a flower and then I get inspired by the flower. 
my small little self expands to include that little flower. And that expansion is the same thing than exercise for my muscle. It, it exercises my spiritual self-confidence. I become connected. Therefore, I, I'm more than just that little tiny little self. I see skies of blue and clouds of white the bright blessed day and the dark sacred night